Our theme this month is pieces into peace. And we are using the book of the month called When Things Fall Apart from Pema Chodron, who we heard from this morning. So let's dive in. When it feels like everything is falling apart into pieces, how can we find and discover more peace? When we are confused, when we are living in the illusion of separation, And when we see evidence of anything but peace in our world, how can we hold on to that higher vision that we know is possible? Spiritual wisdom and tools will help us awaken and rise to this truth, that which Dr. Ernest Holmes, the founder of the Science of Mind teaching, which is our main teaching here at Ahava, That which Dr. Holmes said, peace is always at the center of our own soul. So what I know is that oneness, peace, and harmony prevail. And when things are seemingly falling apart in a way that can bring us to our knees, it requires a deep surrender. Turning over, as we talked about all month last month, (laughs) turning over to the infinite within. Surrender, as we said, is not giving up, but giving over to that presence within, to the peace within, to the wholeness within. And when things fall apart, it offers the perfect opportunity to know who we truly are, and to lean into that faith that spirit's always got our back, and that peace is possible. So this month, we are going to explore what is peace, and how can we cultivate that peace within ourselves, with others, in our community, and in our world, where we truly can begin to put to those, take those pieces together and rise up and be the peace that we see and desire for our world. So I want to start by sharing an excerpt from Dr. Ernest Holmes' Sunday message on November 7th, 1954. So yes, some of the language may be slightly outdated, but hear this truth that resonates throughout all time. You and I know, sorry, I'm pausing because I had the temptation in that moment to try to emulate Dr. Holmes' voice. (laughs) I stopped myself. But it's very hard. You know that 1950s, very clear speech, that, that radio voice? Okay. Anyway, picture that in your mind as I say this. You and I know that no matter how confused we are, if we will get by ourselves long enough and think peace, we shall become peaceful. Peace is the divine reality at the heart of God. It is an announcement of the presence of God, and God is peace. This is what Jesus talked about and what Gandhi understood. This is the only thing that will bring peace on earth. We want peace on earth. Let us pray for peace in our own hearts. Let us affirm peace in our own minds. And let us live as though peace were the mandate of spirit, God itself, because it is. Let us, out of the stillness of our own soul, reach back to the ineffable presence, which is peace, and proclaim it, even in the midst of confusion. Peace which is the power at the heart of God. And scene. (laughs) Uh, So I want to first say, when we say God, when Holmes refers to God, that is just one word that Holmes uses to describe this infinite presence. 
So whatever word works for you, be it life, spirit, universe, divine intelligence, infinite source, cosmic isness, know that when I say God, that is what I'm referring to. Not the old school God of religion, of a man in the sky. We are talking about that infinite source and presence in life that is who we are and is the essence of all life. So peace, which is the power at the heart of God, of life, of who we are. And sometimes, in this wonderful journey of growth and transformation and self-discovery and, and the messiness of our humanity, what it takes is experiencing not peace, to have an awakening. And to rise up and be kind of pushed by that pain in order to long for that peace. So life sometimes can seem like it's happening to us. And perhaps we start to tell ourselves stories that we are a victim to circumstances. But when this happens, we are living unconsciously from this lie of separation, feeling like we are here and everyone else or source or life or God is out there and that things can happen to us that we have no agency over. And when we feel like that is the perfect opportunity to remember, to turn it over, and to surrender to the infinite, and to remember who we are and the peace is within, and that all that we desire is right here. And the confusion and the pain is an opportunity for something to shift so that more can be revealed. So not peace can look like a reactive situation where we feel triggered, perhaps by something somebody said, where we feel triggered by something we see in the world. Perhaps it's a health challenge, financial stress, relationship stress, losing a job. All of us, many times throughout our life, we'll experience these triggers and these situations of not peace. And we can feel hurt. We may feel angry or overwhelmed, out of control. And truly, it feels like our life is falling apart and we don't know what to do. This is a holy, divine opportunity if we choose to accept it and see it as such. When it appears that there is so much to fear in the world, when we are experiencing so much uncertainty as a collective, right? There is nothing more we can do except surrender. Surrender the pieces to the peace of love in God itself. And when I look at what is occurring from a greater perspective, right? Like on the planet as a collective, there is a shift occurring where humanity in our planet, the actual vibration is being raised at an accelerated pace, and time is an illusion anyway, and as we know, it seems to be speeding up. And not just like, where, where did the day go, but like, whoa, the shifts and the change and the growth opportunities are coming like this, right? So we could choose to look at that and say everything's falling apart, what is happening in our world, 
Or we can step back and trust and know that behind the circumstances, we can see the truth and the wholeness and lean into that. We are experiencing a grand rising and an opportunity to awaken in a way that we have yet to do as a collective. And sometimes it feels like the universe is sure pushing us (laughs) into those opportunities. And if we are willing to not put too much credence into the situation and try to control and fix and manage and judge and make right or wrong, if we are willing to surrender and to allow something greater to be known, it will be known. When there appears to be fear and chaos, the invitation is to get still and come right back to this present moment to notice our thoughts about whatever we just saw in the news or heard or experiencing in our life, to simply notice it Turn it over again and again. Allow spirit to show the way. Allow spirit, God, life, the universe to do the heavy lifting and be that open vessel and channel. Listening and asking for that clarity and that peace to be revealed. Listening and asking for what is mine to do now? What is the next right step? What would love say now? Right? It's easy to get caught up in the story and the big picture and everything out there. Moment by moment, coming back to the stillness. And just like that, we will experience that sense of peace as if the burdens have been lifted. Peace will prevail. The insight, the clarity, the way we have seen something will suddenly shift and a whole new possibility will reveal itself. This has been my experience. And it's a day by day choice to surrender, to move from the head to the heart, yes. So when we are clear that peace and freedom and wholeness and love is the truth of who we are, is our birthright, is our natural state, we will begin to notice all of the dissonance that is occurring around us as an opportunity pointing us back within and to turn within to the stillness and to allow that peace, to sit in that peace until we are guided with the next right step. Peace moves us from that feeling of separation into the realization of the oneness of all that is, and that this life source is at the center of our very being. So I'm going to read Dr. Holmes' definition of peace now, and I invite you to really take it in, not just intellectually, like hearing my words, but allow what perhaps this definition of peace would actually feel like in your body. And... The reason we're doing this is because I think sometimes we can get so caught up, especially right now in the busyness of life, that we can forget even what it feels like when we are centered and present and experiencing peace, right? So the desire in this little moment right now is to remember what it feels like to truly be at peace. So I invite you now, if you want to close your eyes, if that's comfortable, take a breath. 
and allow the vibration of these words to wash over you. Again, this is not an intellectual exercise. This is a spiritual experience. Peace. A state of inner calm. An inner calm so complete that nothing can disturb it. The peace which comes only from the knowledge that it is all. Fathomless peace is meant by the peace of the Spirit. This is the peace which Jesus referred to when he said, Peace I leave you with. My peace I give unto you. The infinite is always at peace because there is nothing to disturb it. A realization of our oneness with omnipresence brings peace. The peace which is accompanied by a consciousness, an awareness of power. Take a deep breath and feel that peace and calm. Now open your eyes and take a moment just to check in. Notice how you are feeling now. Notice the sensations in your body. Perhaps there's been some release. Notice your mind, your heart. How do you feel now? Perhaps compared to when you first walked in this morning. This peace, this calm. is possible to experience in any moment that we choose to drop into it. Nothing magical happened just now, right? We simply created a space for less than a minute to drop in and to remind ourselves that peace is here now. So here, is a quick three-step emergency plan for your week on transforming pieces into peace when things seem to fall apart. Number one, stop. Stop whatever you are doing. Notice without judgment that you are not in alignment with this vibration of peace that you have just experienced. And then Give no more energy or attention in that moment to the condition, whether it be the thought or what you're viewing or seeing or experience, right? Just stop. Realize, ah, I'm not experiencing peace right now. Turn away from the condition and back to your center. So we're going to stop. And then we're going to drop. <laughs> but we're going to drop from our head to our heart. It's a little easier than dropping to the floor, yeah? Breathe and invite in the calm and the peace that is ever-present within. So we're going to stop. Just stop engaging. Stop focusing on the external trigger or factor or whatever is happening. Stop. Drop into your heart. Breathe. And number three, pray. Pray as spirit. Pray affirmatively, knowing that what you desire is possible. 
And if in that moment it's not clear the, the you know, specific or the outcome, if you are like in a situation where your mind's like, but I don't even know what to pray for, pray for clarity. Pray for peace. Pray for pre- freedom, right? Again, our ego minds would have us go into the details of our life. And this opportunity is to focus on the qualities that are inherent in who we are and then allow the wisdom to guide us towards how to shift and change out there. Pray as spirit. Pray as peace. Not for peace, but as peace. Knowing that good and only greater good is unfolding within your world. So repeat after me, what is our three-step plan when things seem to fall apart? We are going to stop, drop, and pray. Yes. So this week, no matter what seems to be occurring out there in the world or your world, no matter how things seem to be falling apart, you can know, as Dr. Holmes says, that there is a power for good in the universe greater than I am. And I can lean into it, trust it, allow it to unfold perfectly, to inform who I am and who I'm here to be. In order to discover the higher truth of inner peace. Yes? Okay. We're going to practice stop dropping and praying right now. (laughs) Taking a deep breath. Moving from our heart, our head into our heart. Dropping into this now moment. Where I affirm and recognize the one life. The one life that is love. This one life, this spirit, this wholeness, this presence, that which some call God, life, spirit, is all that there is. This peace, this freedom, this love is the very essence and nature back of all things. So therefore, peace and love and wholeness is who I am. So I stand firm in the awareness of this truth, knowing that I am one with all life. And as this is true for me, this must absolutely be true for each and every person hearing the sound of my voice. This must absolutely be true for this beloved community, Ahava, for our greater organization, Centers for Spiritual Living. This oneness, this freedom, this peace, this wholeness must absolutely be the truth of our spiritual leaders, our political leaders, our country, our world. Hmm. How good it is to remember this truth. How good it is to take this moment and to affirm That everything is unfolding perfectly. To lay down any thoughts or old habits or patterns of lack, of limitation, of separation, of doubt, of fear. Knowing that they dissolve back to the nothingness from which they came. For the truth is love and only love peace and only peace and in this place of awareness of heart-centered awareness clarity is revealed the next right step is revealed moment by moment I'm so grateful to know that I am always at choice. I have agency. And I can lean into the support of the infinite within and the beloved community around me. 
So with great gratitude for the fulfillment of this prayer, I release it now into the universe, into the law that always says, yes, my beloved, yes, yes, it is done, it is happening now. And I accept this truth and embody this truth by affirming right here, right now. And so it is. And so it is. Ah. <sighs>